Taking a trip down recent memory lane, this is the E3 look back episode of The Blend. Hey, I'm Zach Cooper, part of the Ubisoft community team, and while this episode is um, it's arriving a little bit later than I had hoped, uh, we do have some really fun stuff for you. So over the next few minutes, we're going to get to meet some of the most passionate gamers, the Ubisoft star players. We'll learn about that time our CEO got his foot caught in a parachute after jumping out of a plane and witness an unexpected wrestling match between two creative directors. So stick around. For me, E3 began with some technical run-throughs for the live streams and the opportunity to fill in during early rehearsals on the big stage. And I wanted to compare my nervous teleprompter reading to what was delivered from the real Trey Parker during the show. Yeah, you may have been the coolest kid while playing Stick of Truth. I was. But now everyone's playing superheroes and you're the loser. So we, we actually have a backstory that the kids have been playing superhero, but they've been, they got into a big fight about something, so they're in the Civil War. Yeah. Part of their kind of right. uh, and in fact, Marvel wanted to call their movie Captain America: The Fractured Butthole, but we had already taken that name, so they had to they had to call their Civil War. <laughs> Okay, but let's back things up for a sec. The night before the conference was the Ubisoft Star Player Welcome Event. This was the second year in which we invited some of our most passionate gamers to E3. In all, there were 50 who were given an all-access pass with full VIP treatment, uh, starting with food, drinks, ping pong, and uh, some great company. My biggest thing with the Star Players is it's very obvious, it's very community-centered. It's, it's really about the players, it's about Ubisoft, it's about bringing everybody together in a really just fun environment. I mean, you guys had this party going on, you flew us all out here, you guys have taken phenomenal care of us. I just, I don't know, I couldn't have been happier with the way we've been treated, so. Yeah. Have you guys been to E3 before? No, it's our first E3 too, so not only do we get an E3 experience, we get it the way that Ubisoft would bring it to us, which is amazing. We get the VIP treatment from start to finish. Assassin's Creed has done a lot for me. Um, it's been a huge part of my life. It's inspired creativity for me. And, you know, Ubisoft making these games, it's helped me get through very dark times. I suffered a parent's death, you know, and it really helped me get through. It took me into a new world, and I learned something from the characters, and I was able to relate to the characters. So, And I want to dedicate my time to Assassin's Creed because it's done so much for me. Fan Expo Canada, I decided to go in 2015, and it was a dream come true for me. I got to meet so many amazing people who are now like a really big part of my life. I made great friends, and you know, it brought me here to E3. I'm happy to be here. I'm uh, I'm excited to learn, to find out how everything works from the inside, to get to talk to all the developers, the other community managers, and the other games. I am here for For Honor, and I'm excited as hell. I can't wait. She is here for Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Alright. He is here for. I'm here for the for the Ghost team. Oh. Ghost will come right in, guys. <laughs> As for the conference... Ladies and gentlemen, you know when you see a dancing crab and a baby bird with a paper collar that you could only be at the Ubisoft E3 press conference. All right, so since you're watching this, I can only assume that you know about all the games, the reveals, the deep dives, all that. So let's fast forward. Get all that? All right, so some fun moments after the show. I thought, yeah, good for yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, well, you can see that we're speechless, yeah, no, no, and no, we're like, also pretty excited as well. I know. Great, great show, uh, a lot of surprises, and everything that we wanted as well. How excited are you? I'm so excited! He's so excited I'm that so his excited. face is sparkling right now. <laughs> yeah, the For Honor campaign, which uh, is not just single player. It's also cool. co-op, which is pretty sweet. Mm. Was that even mentioned? <laughs> no, it was not mentioned in the conference. It's going to be mentioned this week. Many times, many, many times. But we feel great. It's, yeah. it's months and months of work. From back there, I couldn't hear the reaction, but it was amazing. <laughs> but I so yeah. people liked it. I was out here, and like people were shouting after each kill, after each fight, like hooting and hollering like a, like a wrestling match. It was amazing. The whole theater was trembling with uh, you know, the, the, the bass and the sound of the apocalypse in the, in the train. It was amazing. What did you guys show off? And, and tell me a little bit about the dream team with you and Dave. 
We were sewing. It doesn't matter what the dream team is. DDT. DDT. Ready? <laughs> so this is the this is the chemistry that's obviously required to make a game, right? Yes, true. Have fun. Express yourself. It's uh, the way to do things. Uh, well, it's out now. What are you what are you what are you expecting from the, the players to experience? Uh, a video game mainly, right? Yes. There's like bikes. Cars, you can walk. You, you can, can walk. walk. No, but you can car. There's a cars. Yeah, but you can't car them. Yeah, but in a way, your English you is shoot. your English is hard to understand. No, no, no. It's a cars. Cars. Not, not cars. You can car. Car Carve with the knife. Look, there's a cars. Eight wheeler. Okay. Yeah. And there's like mining cart. What's a, <laughs> a what cart? <laughs> Mining, mining car. car. Can't you I understand English? Minecraft. No, mining car. <laughs> Your car? No, my car? mining, mining. You know they have these cars that go in the mines. When? How, how it's called? When they exhale metal. They get the metal. <laughs> Auntie and Dean, uh, a couple of gents right there. Um, shortly after that, though, we made our way to the LA Convention Center, where we'd run through our technical setups ahead of the live stream, which kicked off uh, before E3 actually began. This is Ubisoft Live at E3. I am Zach, and we've got some wonderful people with you all day long, live from the show floor over at the Ubisoft Lounge as well for some master classes. But here we are, about 30 minutes before go time. This is Gabe, who hopefully you all know. Hello, everybody. Gabe Graziani. I'm from Zach Cooper. We're both from the community team. And then we also have a couple of fine gentlemen who uh, you would have seen, uh, if not before, certainly at the Ubisoft pre-show ahead of yesterday's conference. Gentlemen, we've got Justin and Leon. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? We're feeling pretty good. Yesterday was amazing. Then there's the time I got to interview Yves Guimot, the CEO of Ubisoft, who, when uh, talking about how much he loved revealing Steep, also shared a story about jumping out of a plane. The new IP is, is really something very, very interesting. So with that in mind, I mean, what, what do you look forward to in particular most? Is it the wingsuit, the skis, the snowboard, or the paragliding? Because it speaks very much to your personality, right? Like what you yeah. align with is what I you... Would, I would love to do a wingsuit, you know. Yeah. I, I, I love that. I, I did, um, when I was young, I, I did some, uh, some parachutes. Um, and uh, you know, using a, a wing a little bit, and fr and also um, the, um, the, the the ability to you know to 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 jump, and without a parachute, you know, to fly for a while. I love that. It was so great. Wow. So you're doing some some skydiving and everything. I mean, I obviously making games is is a thrill in itself. I didn't realize you were that kind of a thrill seeker. Is this something you're you're, you're still doing? I'm not doing it because uh, <laughs> anymore because. At one point, I had um, when my parachute opened, you know, it it didn't work the way I wanted, so I had um, a foot that was taken in the in the, all the ropes, you know, and so Whoa. It, it stopped me a little bit. So I couldn't continue because I did that while you know in France you have to do one year army, and so during that year I chose to to take uh, to to take that you know that kind of uh, activity. Uh, I was not in the parachutist um, group, but you could take uh, lessons. Right. And so I was able to go when I wanted, and it was fantastic. But as it, when it ended, you know, I didn't try more uh, afterwards. Steep gives you the opportunity to to experience to the it. same thrills a little exactly. bit safer. Exactly. <laughs> Eve moonlighting as a paratrooper. No idea. Um, he also talked about how much he enjoyed showing off Star Trek Bridge Crew, a virtual reality game that allows you and up to three friends to join the Federation and lead the Aegis starship against the Klingons. I got to chat with creative director uh, David Vatipka uh, about how the whole thing came to be. This idea has been rolling around in our heads for quite a long time. Uh, we've been working on it for a while, and so to finally re reveal it and to 
bring the world's first Star Trek VR game game to, to market is super exciting. And to to play with Jordy LaForge and and some of the rest of the cast, yeah. it's, gonna, it's gonna be a pretty cool experience. Yeah, that shoot excited. was a lot of fun. I bet. Uh, like they were just so genuinely excited and into it, and you know they put on the headsets and immediately they're like, wow, this is awesome and. And then we started just bantering, and they got right into their roles. And like they said in the video, Jordy especially was just like <laughs> calling everything out, and it was great. It was great. Yeah, LeVar Burton was a. Uh, I mean, he kind of that that charm is. I don't yeah. know if he could turn it off, but he certainly <laughs> didn't on stage. Like that was yeah, that was sure. amazing. I'm not I'm not a huge Trekkie by any means, but I was in. Like I want to get on that bridge crew and I want to mess around. How did it all come together? I mean, you talked about the fact that it was an idea that was sort of burning in your heads, but there's obviously a lot that goes in, and I don't know how much we we can or want to get into this stuff, but to a be able to make that partnership at a time when it's like the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Yeah, that's a, I mean that's a pretty big fish to catch. Yeah, well, so we've been working in social multiplayer for a while at Red Storm, even before we started VR. Um, so we already kind of had that social mindset. Um, then for me, I've been wanting to do VR since the 90s, and I worked in it for a little while. So then when it started coming back, we were really excited, and we started thinking the idea about the idea of social VR. And then we looked at the Star Trek brand. We were talking to the licensing guys, and there was a whole deck of licenses, and one of them was Star Trek. And we were like, wait a minute. The bridge crew, like it's in the DNA of the brand already. It's social, right? This is going to be awesome. So that's that's kind of how it kicked off. Speaking of social and uh, not at all awkward. So are you taking a photo right now? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak in there, do a little hi. How are you? Are you guys you guys talking at all? <laughs> all right. Well, I'm feeling particularly safe. Uh, not at all threatened. Yeah, this is uh, warm and comforting. Uh, this this looks good. You guys are looking good. And thankfully, for the moment at least, you're at peace. I don't know what's planned, but I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what happens. Feeling a little claustrophobic. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is a good grip. I don't know who that is. Okay. That's a samurai. That's cool. I, I, I am samurai. I am samurai. So I feel the love. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you very much. We can shake hands because I'm kind of neutral. Fist bump. And there we go. Oh, yeah. You got some blood on there. Woo! All right, let's create a little distance. Thank you very much. Have a good show. Good luck. And here, oh, we actually we have the uh, community team for For Honor right here. Here, let's let's go ahead and step over here. A Eric, what you you guys dressed down for this? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, the suits the suits are taking a break. I, I heard yours took a, a bit of a different kind of break. Yeah, I heard Justin broke broke the news on the stream. My suit got me through the day and no mud, no more. I'm Zach, this is Eric Pope, this is Emil Gauthier. These are the community developers for For Honor. When we talk about immersive experiences, like this is this is the combat system, the art of battle that ensures that you are not missing any single moment. Um, you guys have been obviously hanging out with some star players that you've brought to the show. What are you sensing from them in terms of how that sort of experience that you guys are striving to achieve, how that's sort of translating to what they're seeing? So we uh, we have these community reporters that we brought out, and they're part of the Star Players program, and they got actually got hands on last night. Uh, and they like they react. I mean, they can tell you actually. We can have them on after this, but their reactions were priceless. Like they seem to really love what they played, which is good, you know, because last year we showed multiplayer. This year we're showing our story campaign, and like they came away like, oh, I want more of that. So that's a very good sign. You guys have been here for a few days now. What is it that you've seen? What is it that you've experienced? I think the number one thing is we got to experience For Honor. So that was obviously why we're here. Honestly, I think that was what we were most excited about. The shows have all been great, but I think that's the one that's keeping us excited. It's keeping us just enthralled in everything. And then getting our hands on that single player, showing that this game is so much more than just a multiplayer game. The story is driven, it's great, it plays seamlessly. I've been completely blown away by it. How about you, Zach? What's sort of standing out to you? My uh, entire thing here can be described in one word, and that is Vikings. It's been absolutely amazing. The reveal was absolutely wonderful. It was like letting the cork off a big secret. So that was great. Delivered perfectly, and then playing it with something else entirely. So, Robin, what's what's good from your perspective? I mean, what what have you seen? What have you done? What stands out so far, knowing that there's still so much more to come? For me, it definitely has to be the gameplay for For Honor. I mean, we all know it's beautifully, it's just graphically beautiful. We all know the campaign just looks stunning, but it's the gameplay of actually feeling like you're a knight and a viking. And I can't do that because I can't be a viking. I don't have the beard for that. So I have to represent the samurais. Yeah! Samurais, woo! 
so I have to do that. That was a really loud move. And just seeing the game, seeing the people's reactions. I mean, when For Honor, every time something happened, everyone just lost their minds. Seeing the love for this game and seeing people do it is just, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. And to be here representing that, it's an unreal experience. Well, I didn't get my opportunity to get my hands on For Honor before the show opened. Me and uh, Gabe Graziani, my live stream co-host, uh, Yubi Gabe, uh, we got to assist the Ghost Recon team with their demo rehearsals by hitting up some four-player co-op action. And it turned out the next day I got to uh, have a really interesting conversation with Dominic Butler, who is the lead game designer on Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, he spoke of the diversity of the environment and uh, how that impacts tactics. Bolivia is an absolutely incredible place. In real life, we sent teams out there to explore it, to see it ourselves we didn't just want to bring the, the guidebook the tourist version of it we sent the teams there to meet with local people and understand what makes Bolivia tick we maintain that relationship over time and we've been able to bring a lot of that Bolivia to life but what's really important is not the numbers so much are saying oh it's the biggest because it's just more and more but it's really the, the different ecosystems right so like real Bolivia, it's kind of crazy people don't believe it if they haven't seen it already, but in Bolivia you've got all these really wildly different ecosystems. You've got like swamps and, and really like lowlands and they're kind of dangerous and rivers that become very muddy. You've got uh, highlands, you've got deserts, you've got uh, salts, big huge salt deserts where lakes have dried up, you've got the death road, you've got snow peaks. My point of all of this is we've been able to bring these to life in the game, not just as uh, a difference as you're traveling across this open world, so you see it evolve, you see it change, but really importantly, and it was the key part, we knew we were onto something good, was that it's, like there's a different gameplay, right? At its core, Ghost Recon Wildlands, a tactical shooter. So we want to bring that tactical experience, not just from the AI, but also the environment is challenging you all the time, because you just can't play the same way in the snowy peaks as you will in a flat desert in the jungle you have to mix it up right so that's something that was really exciting yeah and the, i mean getting around that open world is yep. obviously i mean it's part of the joy yeah i don't know i mean we've seen motorcycles we've seen some trucks yep. uh we've seen helicopters sure what uh, are you talking about any of the other vehicles yeah, and, so and ways to get around without going in like massive detail right now we've got like more than I think it's 60 different vehicle types we've got a range of civilian vehicles army vehicles We've got boats, bikes, buggies, planes, helicopters, uh, trucks, armored trucks, uh, military vehicles, tractors and, and farming vehicles and mining vehicles and the stuff that you would expect to find in a world like this, right? It's not just built for the camp, it's for the world. And the cool thing is you get to play with all of it. You get to use whatever you find in whatever way you want. There's no restrictions. You play the way you want. Something interesting that I'd learned at the show is um, actually how closely Ghost Recon Wildlands is tied to this year's big surprise and new IP, Steep. Actually, we started to look at the uh, technology for Ghost Recon Wildlands, where they were doing the mountains, and we thought like, wow, these mountains, we can probably do something with them. So we started to learn more about the Ghost Recon Wildlands technology, and then uh, we had an old prototype of a jet ski, and we put those two, the Ghost Recon technology together with the prototype that we already had, and it really worked out. It was a great, <laughs> great marriage. So water is not like snow, but nearly. So we have the physics already from the beginning. And because we're an online studio, we immediately had the seamless multiplayer as well. So we were very lucky. The one part that really resonated with me, you know, you know, the, the wingsuit is like super high intensity. And I think a lot of people were like, yeah, that looks awesome. Uh, I'm a skier, but it, it was the moment that you showed right toward the end. It was the, the soft paragliding you know just enjoying the environment where I was like man I really need something like that right now yeah there there's people in the team that love paraglide one of them he wants to create a challenge where basically you go from one peak to the other one it's like Turner's gameplay just flying over uh, of the of the world and and you know you can you can get the benefits of uh, the the lift up to stay on the air so you can fly for hours if you if you if you wish and I do. Uh, one of the loudest receptions at the conference came from Watch Dogs 2. And as we saw on the show floor, uh, fans are already getting involved. Yes, we've got a super creative community. Like already after the announcement last Wednesday, we began to see like 
already Marcus fan art. Like it's, uh, it's been an avalanche, like an yeah. avalanche yeah. of fan sure. art. It's and for good, sure. like really yeah. good stuff within within yeah. hours. You know, they're like, look at this amazing portrait I made. You like, know, I think yesterday so cool. uh, after the narrative demo was shown, Wrench was a huge hit. So Wrench is the yes. guy with the leather jacket and that yeah. mask and. Fans are going crazy over him, and we've, we've already seen tons of fan art being shared on Twitter, and people Be are wanting to make that mask. Pe yeah. People are already uh, people are already shipping Marcus and the wrench oh, as no. like the yeah. the bromance of the oh, century. Really? That that <laughs> wink. Find someone who looks at you the way Wrench looks at Marcus. Yeah, no, actually, I, I remember seeing uh, a piece of fan art for Wrench yeah. um, by one of last year's star players, Red yes. Opasta, right? Like, she she did an amazing job, right? Yeah. And I just. And, and for all you cosplayers out there, we will be coming out with the Wrench Cosplay Guide in the oh, next few weeks. No. Yeah. So we came out with the Marcus Holloway one last Wednesday, so stay tuned the, for the Wrench one. The first person who makes like an LED wrench mask is just going to, we're, we're going to go nuts. Yeah, that stuff I'm, I'm sure requires some technical know-how that is well beyond my means. But a big shout out to all of the artists who are sharing their work. Uh, follow Watch Dogs on Tumblr if you want to stay up to date with all that fun stuff. Um, another topic actually that those guys talked about was the fan feedback, how crucial it is and how with Watch Dogs 2 they've been very invested obviously in processing everything that was said about the first Watch Dogs. Uh, Anne Blondell is the Ubisoft VP of Live Operations which among other things uh, speaks to our online strategies and ongoing development after a game has launched. Uh, part of that is our ongoing evolution in dealing with cheaters. Well, on the cheating part uh, we are um, uh, updating sorry, our code of conduct and making sure that we are, when we ca catch someone um, cheating, well, it's a permaban. I know it's strong, but we want it to be very firm and very clear for everybody that we would not let players ruin other gamers' experience. It's super important for us. That's the first step. Of course, there's still a way of appealing because we want to make sure that people being banned can show they were um, out of uh, yeah. Yeah, good face. Yeah. And on the ex exploit front, obviously this is uh, improving even more our testing uh, internally and externally. So we're also looking at having some players helping us uh, earlier enough in the process also give us their feedback about a new update which is coming or a new DLC for instance or a new expansion which is coming. As I said, part of the strategy being as close as possible to players so that when we release for good the things it's as best as possible. That obviously requires a great deal of involvement from the community team, so I just want to echo that. Uh, please keep the feedback coming, the, uh, the good, the bad. Uh, let's just try to keep it constructive, of course. And uh, one last thing before we leave E3, the Assassin's Creed team had a big surprise for their star players. Okay. Uh, one of the really cool things that we're doing for them tomorrow. Can you guys hear him, by the way? Can you hear what he's saying right now? A little bit? <laughs> All right. All right. So we're taking the Assassin's Creed star players Taking the tomorrow. Assassin's Creed star players tomorrow to the Fox Studios. Sorry, what was that? The Fox Studios oh, okay. here in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Where they are going to get to see the first 20 minutes of the film. What? Yes. What? <laughs> Before. <laughs> We're. <laughs> It's a pretty special opportunity. That's pretty amazing. No, and, and we want to say a big thank you to 28th Century Fox, who, you know, who made this happen. Uh, myself, Stephanie and Sansan, who are on the community Stephanie team. Stephanie and Sansan? They're just off camera. Yeah, what are they doing off camera? Well, one of them is filming stuff that we're going to be using in the video later. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, so we've, we've been trying our best to make that happen, and 20th Century Fox made it happen. So we're going to take them on a tour tomorrow. Mind you, Fox don't do private tours of that studio, so this yeah. is special for them. It's that uh, it's that assassin's cachet <laughs> gets you to wonderful places. That's, so, what do you guys think about that? You excited? Oh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited. I don't even get to go, and I'm excited. <laughs> Amazing. Here's just a, a small glimpse of their experience by way of some tweets. Uh, it was obviously a pretty confidential tour, but uh, look out for some of the coverage in the upcoming episode of Assassin's Creed's community show, The Codex, which is actually hosted on the Assassin's Creed YouTube channel. Uh, quickly, though, before we go, I just want to give a quick shout-out to the team behind the Dark Zone Report. Uh, those guys orchestrated a huge community event for The Division ahead of the Underground expansion, which is out now on Xbox One and PC, coming soon to PlayStation 4. Uh, the DZR Gear Up event was really well managed with a lot of really good-hearted people playing, hunting down those rogues while protecting the meek like myself, allowing me to gear up and be ready for the expansion. Um, also, if you haven't checked out the Dan Bull rap for Ghost Recon, 
Here's a small taste. Don't you know you've seen a ghost? Cause we're supposed to be nobody, nobody from the cover canopies we go beneath. Oakley, locally, shipping coakley, overseas. Is it supposed to be so easy? So we're blowing the boat into pieces. Jesus, my landslides just enough pebbles to ruffle feathers. I stand by as the dust settles. A gun, metal, metal. Yeah, you gotta check that out. I uh, personally think it's one of his best. Love as well to those For Honor community reporters. Robin Ghosh uh, put out some fun vlogs while Zach and Brandon put together a nice hands-on walkthrough of some of the campaign, uh, which you should definitely dig into. E3 was a hell of an experience, and it was great to meet those guys, the rest of the star players, uh, do the live stream thing, work with Gabe and our Ubisoft family from Paris and around the world, and really just, just be a part of that energy. Um, I sincerely hope you dug this look back. It, it was certainly nice for me to reminisce, but I also think it, it's also helped me envision part of the direction I actually want this show to go into. I want to feature more of you, your work, your passion, your involvement in what we do. So if you make wicked fan art, if you're spending time on cosplay, I want to see it. If you see some great clips on YouTube from our games or if you make them yourself, I want to see it. Hit me up on Twitter at TheBlendUbi or send me an email, theblend at Ubisoft.com. Star players, where are you at? Uh, want to become one yourself? Let's see what you got. I'm Zach. And this is The Blend. Much love. This is Justin. Come on. Come on. And Rick as well, who's been producing and directing. Thanks, Zach. This, is, this has been a lot of fun, guys. Is this, yeah. this is one magic moment right here. Oh, it's beautiful. I think we're done. Are we done? Is that it?